The papyrus. Put it on my table every month. I don't want to miss it. Don't even try to hide it. No, I don't want to lose it. And you see how it is. It's so inviting. The papyrus. We're all so online. The papyrus. Hello, welcome to the papyrus TV Africa. And this is your news update. Today is the 1st October 2024 and it's the Nigerian independence celebration. First the headlines. Fearless October protest launches in Abuja. Sedumbu launches 30 days youth come fab to tackle education, job and security. Police use tear gas to dispense protesters in Abuja. Reverse local government elections in jeopardy as police seal River State Electoral Commission office. Tinubu honors Akpabio and Kekere Ekun with GCON. The very dark man apologizes to Falana and files for Babriski allegation. Uzo Okagwe calls for greater accountability from Nigerians federating units. Now on the news in details. The hashtag fearless in October protest has officially kicked off today in Abuja, marking a nationwide movement that extends the end bad governance demonstration held from August 1st to 10th. Protesters began gathering at early at 7 a.m. at Utako Market, voicing their grievances over the economic hardship faced by many Nigerians. Damilare Adenola, Director of Mobilization for the Take It Back movement emphasized the detrimental impact of federal government policies on the nation's economy. As the protests unfold, the Federal Capital Territory Police Command has reassured residents of a secured Independence Day celebration. In a statement, Public Relations Officer SP Josephine Ade confirmed that adequate personnel and equipment have been deployed throughout Abuja. These include Explosive Ordnance Disposal, EOD Team, and anti-riot gear to ensure safety during the celebration. The police plan to implement traffic diversion in areas anticipated to draw large crowd and urge citizens to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activities to the emergency lines. In his Independence Day address, President Bola Tenumbu announced a Saturday National Youth Conference aimed at empowering young Nigerians to address pressing issues such as education, employment, innovation, security, and social justice. The initiative is designed to involve over 60% of the nation's population, the youth, in shaping policies that directly impact their future. Tinubu emphasized that the structure and delegate selection for the conference would be developed in close consultation with youth representatives. He also affirms the government's commitment to implementing the recommendation from the CONFAB while highlighting ongoing youth-centric programs including the 3 Million Technical Talent 3MTT initiative which aims to build Nigerian digital talent base. The conference is part of the administration's broader effort to ensure youth engagement in nation building and drive towards a brighter, more inclusive future for Nigeria. The recent development, in a heated confrontation, officers of the Nigerian police force deployed tear gas against protesters gathered in the Boston Otako market area of Abuja on Tuesday, 1st October 2024. The demonstration, which is part of the ongoing nationwide protest against economic hardship, erupted as civil society group rallies to stabilize the activities in light of recent fuel price hike and soaring food costs. This protest, part of the End Bad Governance movement, commenced on Nigerian 64 Independence Day and highlights the urgent demands of government action amid rising inflection. The resurgence followed earlier protests in August that turned violent in some northern states. Despite police efforts to disperse the crowd, the determined demonstrators continued to advocate for immediate government intervention to ease country economic challenges. Also, the River State Police Command have sealed off the premises of River State Independent Electoral Commission, RSIEC, ahead of scheduled local government elections on October 5, 2024. The decision move come in response to Federal High Court injunction that has suspended all electoral activities in the state, prohibiting security agencies from participating in any election-related processes on the dates. 
Images from the scene dispute a significant police presence, encircling the Electoral Commission's office with officers diligently preventing any activities from taking place. This development casts uncertainty over the upcoming elections, raising concern about the enforcement of the court's ruling and its implication for the electoral process in River State. Moving on, in a significant gesture marking Nigerians' Independence Day, President Bola Tinubu has awarded prestigious Grand Commander of the Order of Nigeria, GCON, to Senate President, Senator Goswil Akwabio, and the Chief Justice of the Federation, Kudurat Kekereiko. During his address to the nation this morning, President Tinubu celebrated their contribution to the country, emphasizing the importance of their leadership roles in shaping Nigerians' future. This honor reflects the President's commitment to recognizing and rewarding exemplary service in the nation's governance. Furthermore, controversial social media activist Martins Ote, popularly known as Very Dark Man, has issued an apology to renowned human rights lawyer Femi Fala Nassan and his son Files for their unintended involvement in his recent allegation against cross-dresser Bob Risky during his appearance before the House of Representatives Joint Committee on Financial Crime. Very Dark Man expressed disbelief regarding Falana's alleged connection to the bribery claim involving Idris Okunehi, also known as Bob Risky. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Nigerian Correctional Service. In a heartfelt message shared on social media, Very Dark Man urged FAS to drop the lawsuit he filed against him and join forces to combat corruption in Nigeria. He emphasized that Femi Falana remains a respected figure in their shared struggle against corruption, expressing regret for any misunderstanding caused by his previous comment. Following the release of an audio conversation purportedly involving Bob Risky, Files and his father threatened legal action against very dark man for deformation prompting this apology on a final note on this segment chief uzo akagui has urged nigerians to shift their focus towards holding the nation's federating units accountable particularly state governors and local government chairpersons speaking during nigerian independence anniversary which coincides with his birthday Okagwe emphasized that if citizens directed even half the scrutiny they applied to the presidency towards their governor they would witness transformative changes that significantly improved their lives. Highlighting the importance of local governance, Okagwe pointed out that Nigerian structure is designed to address the need of its people through its state and local government. He noted that despite the substantial FAG disbursement, including at least 300 million naira each to local government in Anambra State in August, citizens continue to face challenges like poor infrastructure, lack of clean water. Okagwe called for transparency from local leaders regarding the allocation and utilization of funds, stressing that neglecting to hold these officers accountable delay the vision of a well-governed society where citizens need to take priority in government's decision. This has been the Papyrus TV Africa. The Papyrus, put it on my table every month. I don't